be taking you through a field autopsy today. We have a pig, we have our tools laid out, and so let's go ahead and start with the basics. Okay, number one, the uh, deceased comes into the, uh, the morgue. All right, in this case, what we have here is we have a small pig. This is an upgrade for us this year. Uh, last two years, we've been using rats and we've had a lot of success. And I asked my bosses this year for a bunch of pigs. So uh, even though I have a pig in front of me, you uh, all 150 or so of y'all would have been dissecting a pig with me uh, probably a couple weeks ago if this had been regular school time. Okay, so the first question I'm gonna get is, why are we doing a pig? Why are we not doing a monkey? Why are we not doing a, a human? Okay, we don't do a human because, well, it's just not practical and also it violates a whole bunch of laws and you're just not gonna do that, okay? Why not a monkey, since people generally assume monkeys are the closest thing? Monkeys are ripping expensive. I mean, we're talking minimum $500 for a deceased monkey, probably closer to about five grand, depending on the condition and how it's prepped. Okay, so pigs. Pigs are have very similar organs to humans. That's why we're using them, and this is where we're gonna get started on. So you got your pig has come into the morgue, or you've got your deceased in the morgue. Okay, we've already verified the identity, or we have no identity, but we have a toe tag or some sort of piece of documentation on the pig to let me know. Okay, in this case, we don't have that. Okay, but, we'll, but we're just gonna assume that we do. Okay, so what would we do? All right, first step is we're gonna photograph everything. Okay, I've just got my phone here. We're gonna simulate this. You're gonna photograph it. Now, you're not just photographing, hey, there's the pig's head. No, you're gonna photograph the entire body. So, we're gonna go over every inch and we're gonna look for any tattoos. We're gonna look for any distinguishing marks. We're gonna flip the pig over. Uh, all right, so we're gonna be looking for distinguishing markings, tattoos, piercings, anything like that. In addition, we're also gonna be checking the body for track marks, okay? Any sign of intravenous drug use, okay? In a human, we'd be looking for things, uh, generally track marks in the arms, the elbows, stuff like that. Uh, if you can pan up for me real quick. So for humans, here, 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 webbings of toes, any place where there's an artery and vein, okay? So we'd be doing that the same thing with a pig, okay? The pig has not been using intravenous drugs. We're not super concerned about that. So what's the next step? Okay. Okay, step two. Well, we've taken a look for everything, anything we need to do. We're gonna follow the same rule of three that we did for photos, okay? Uh, rule of three for photos is, remember, we take a photo of the entire item, okay? Then we come back and we take a photo of everything again with a measuring uh, device. So, for our pig here, all right, we're gonna be using inches on this guy, uh, just because you're all more familiar with it. So we got six inches here. Okay, we're up to 12. And looks like we're at about uh, 13 and a half inches overall. And when we add the tail in, with the tail in, we bring him up to 16 and a half inches. Okay, we would do both these sets of measurements because remember, Document, document, document. Document every aspect you can, okay? One of the other things I would have had you do with the pig if we were in the classroom, we'd also check the width of the pig. So the width of the pig at its thickest point is approximately three and a quarter inches at the torso. And the pig from height wise, okay, so we're measuring the width here. Uh, overall width of the body, it looks to be about three and a half inches. We measure the approximate height, approximate height from the tallest point of the pig from about here to feet looks to be about seven and a half inches well. Okay, last one we're gonna do is we're gonna check the thickness of the body. Obviously the pig's a little bit deflated looking, but we're gonna go ahead and mark that anyway. And the pig looks to be approximately two and three quarters, I'm sorry, not two and three quarters, one and three quarters inches in width. Okay, so these are our initial measurements that we're having for the outside of the body. So, uh, in a human, one of the things you would do is you would photograph, I'm sorry, not you photograph, you'd fingerprint the hands and feet. Now, let's say for whatever reason, you had the hands or feet were missing or they were damaged, uh, well, or let's fingertips are destroyed by fire or acid or something like that. 
We can reconstruct that, but you do have to deglove the hand. And we're gonna attempt to do that maybe in a minute. I actually don't know if I can deglove a pig's hoof. I know I can for a rat because they have similar uh, phalanges and uh, finger joints as a human, but I'm not 100% sure about a pig, but we're gonna figure that out. So let's go ahead and get started on the first actual cut incision. And this is referred to as the Y incision. Now, as you notice here on our pig, uh, our pig is got a cut all the way through his neck. That is from the... Okay, so we're going to be using, uh, this, this is my personal scalpel uh, that Steve Ryan gifted me. Um, and we're going to go ahead and make a Y incision. Now, uh, in a human and a pig, it's a little bit different, but we are going to basically cut in and you can see there's already a starting incision. Y'all would have all had these on yours. And we're gonna go down all the way to the urethra, okay? Still not really deep enough yet. I wanna make sure I'm cutting through muscle tissue, okay? So we're cutting through muscle tissue here. Okay, and we've got this opening right here. Now, uh, one of the things we've, I've learned over the years while doing this is we gotta kinda make sure that you open it up a little bit more. So I'm gonna cut underneath the joints here, okay? Uh, and if you're in culinary, you would recognize this move fairly well. Okay, cutting underneath here. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get better access to the rib cage, all right? Because the rib cage is where we're going next. So I've got my Y incision, and I am trying to open this guy up more, and he's not being super cooperative about this try and make this a little bit easier is I'm gonna pin this guy down um, I don't know if this is gonna work real well I don't think my pins are long enough but we are gonna try and attempt this anyway so we got my pig pinned down here all right I know there's a joke here one of you wants to go ahead and make go ahead and make it because I know you're going to do it anyway uh, but let's continue on all right so we've got our Y incision that is definitely a little nastier than I normally would, okay? And we've got them opened up here. Now, here's the thing. We're looking for the rib cage. I'm gonna switch from scalpel to scissors here. And I'm gonna cut into the rib cage area. This guy's got some pretty soft ribs. Oh, and, okay. and go. All right, and so, um, my wife just reminded me, I should probably tell you what we're dealing with here. This is not a full grown pig, okay? This is a fetal pig. Um, someone usually t asks me the following questions. Hey, why Mr. Menifee, why are you killing pigs? Stuff like that. I'm not killing pigs, guys. Literally, we buy them this way. Uh, they are still born from slaughterhouses. So these are pigs that we're gonna die one way or another. We're just using them um, for scientific purposes. Okay, trying to get this out. Here, come on this side. Go. Okay, so we've got most of the uh, chest plate off, and I am finishing up the final cut on the chest plate. And, ah, okay, there we go. The chest plate is now removed. Now, what is the chest plate? Chest plate is your ribs right here. And ideally, if we were gonna stitch this guy back together, uh, if we had to do a proper burial, we'd put him all in and he'd look somewhat nice. And okay, so um, this is kind of our diagram of the pig. And first thing we're gonna do is we're going to remove the major organs. So we're gonna start with our two major organs, uh, the uh, circulatory and respiratory organs, the major ones. We're gonna remove the heart and we're gonna remove the lung. So let's take a look and see what these guys look like here. This multi-lobed thing up here that looks nothing like a lung, as you imagined, is your lung. Heart's here, and lung is here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove these. And these are actually soft enough, for the most part, that I can remove them by hand. So we got our lungs here, and we got our heart. Okay, now we're gonna go and separate our lungs and our heart. Okay, okay, so we got our lung here. Well, we would definitely weigh this, 
and we weigh both of these and then we would check them for any signs of disease, okay? So uh, any signs of cancer, we cut them open, we take a biopsy and we basically be looking for like, hey, is there smoker's lung? Is there evidence of some sort of growth in the lung? Is there some sort of tumor? Is there something that just doesn't look right? Okay, so that'd be first step. Second step, heart. Okay, we're taking a look at the heart. We're taking a look at the various ventricles. Now, I'm about to switch to a much larger heart, so it's a little bit easier to see. So, all right, so this is a regular size pig heart. This is a fetal pig heart. This is closer to what you would find inside of a human. Okay, so what would we be looking for? Well, we first off, we look on the outside of it. Okay, we like, okay, is there any damage? Is there any bullet holes, is there any knife wounds? Is there any ruptured anything? Okay, we'd also take note, this, is a, this heart's in pretty decent shape. It's got some fatty tissues on it. The white is an indication of fatty tissue in this guy on this heart. Uh, and then we would cut it open. So that's gonna be our next step is we're gonna cut this guy open here. So let me go ahead and move this guy real quick. We're gonna cut it along the line and you can see what it is. Now, the fun thing about the heart is the heart is one of the handful of muscles in the body that does not repair itself. Almost every other muscle does. The heart does not have the capacity like other muscles do. Also, the heart really doesn't have a rest stage because it's constantly pumping, okay? And understand, guys, this, if it looks like a piece of steak when we get it, when we cut inside of it, it's because it's the same thing as steak. Steak is muscle tissue. Hamburger is just ground up muscle tissue with fat added, okay? So as you can see, it looks like a piece of steak and you can see the ventricles in here, okay? And this, I am, I'll be really honest, I'm not super experienced with the heart, but you'd be looking for any sort of blockages, depending on what the approximate cause of death is. We'd really be going through all the tissues here. Is it wrong that I'm kind of hungry for steak now? Looks like a medium rare. Okay, so we've seen this and understand this is literally how big it is. Uh, the average general belief is, and this is, there's like we said, this is a, a rule, but there's always, in biology, there's always an asterisk mark. There's always a but then or as if or, you know, under these circumstances, okay? Generally, the idea is your heart is a little bit bigger than your hand. So if you make a fist and you put your hand on top of it, that's generally about your heart size on average some exceptions may apply.